Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We are at Exodus chapter 9 today, verses 12 to 17, and we move on into another plague, the plague of the hail. Let me read the passage to us, this portion of it. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues on you and your servants and your people, so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For if by now I had put forth my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, you would then have been cut off from the earth. But indeed, for this reason I have allowed you to remain, and in order to proclaim my name through all the earth. Still you exalt yourself against my people by not letting them go. Now, I'm going to plan to address the hardening of Pharaoh's heart a little bit more extensively, probably between the ninth and the tenth plague. So we're, we're almost there, and uh, that deserves a serious treatment all on its own here. But we're looking here at what the, the rest of it here. But we look here at the rest of this, and, and the, this, this description of this, this plague, the seventh plague here, is really quite a bit longer than some of the others. It's much more extensive. It's also got a lot of alls in it. Did you notice that? It speaks of all his plagues and of all the earth that comes up two or three times. All, all this, all the people of Egypt would be destroyed, you know, but, if, but that I didn't do that. So this is an interesting one because, again, each plague marks an escalation. And now we're going uh, up much higher in the escalation scale than the previous plague. And he speaks here of his plagues in all the earth. And it sounds like this one's going to be more devastating than all the previous plagues by a long, by a long ways. You know, Pharaoh thought there was none like him in all the earth. You know, he's kind of in charge of Egypt. Everybody answers to him. He is the, the top guy. But what he's learned, though, is that it's not he who, that there's no one like him. It is the God of heaven and earth. He is the incomparable one. He, the God of the Hebrews, he is the incomparable God. None of the other gods of the Egyptians, the frog gods, the crocodile gods, the, the different goddesses, and, and the different, some we've talked about three or four of them already here. None of them even remotely, uh, it's not even in the same ballpark here. These are all, these are all empty have turned and shown to be empty. And the God of the Hebrews, he's in control of everything. He is literally incomparable to any of the other gods. He's incomparable in power and he's incomparable in mercy. God allowed Pharaoh to remain in order to show Pharaoh his power and also that his name, God's name, might be proclaimed through all the earth. And so God is using this for uh, this showdown for bigger purposes. And yes, he wants Pharaoh uh, to relent, but and we'll talk about the hardening of Pharaoh's heart. Maybe we can just say this for the moment. Pharaoh is consistently chosen on his own free will. He has chosen to be against God, chosen to be against him, chosen to be against him, chosen to be in, in with each escalation in the in the plagues, Pharaoh has been relentlessly in opposition. And when you choose uh, one thing, your heart, your you're strengthening yourself in that thing until you choose it again. Then you strengthen yourself in it again. So there have definitely been a lot of free choice going on here. And sadly, each time you or I exercise our free choice in the wrong line, we strengthen ourselves in the wrong line, and it makes it more difficult for us to back off and come back into the right place. God's purpose is not to destroy, his purpose is to save. But here's a whole culture that's filled with fake deities. And all those fake deities have to be emptied of their legitimacy uh, first before people will begin to see what they are. And that uh, there's a God, there's a new sheriff in town. I mean, he's not new, he's been around before anybody, right? But the true God, the true God, he is there and he's showing who he is right now. And he's come up against a pretty relentless uh, self-serving force. But God is still working through to the final point in all this. And that process of emptying all these fake gods of their legitimacy, it's, it's pretty far advanced already, isn't it? And finally, in the last verse here, God says he's very unhappy that Pharaoh continues to be oppressing his people. He's continuing to push down against God's people. God has identified himself. These are my people. Let them go. And Pharaoh is continuing to provoke God to his face by being uh, continuing to have the Hebrews under bondage. So it's time for Pharaoh to get some clue here. But anyway, looks like that's not going to happen. And tomorrow, let's see what happened when the plague, this plague, this particular 
extremely nasty plague falls.